Thank you very much. Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another press conference of the 68th San Sebastian Film Festival. We have the pleasure to have with us part of the cast and crew that is a, the closing film of the festival. And we have with us Fernando Trueba, the director, and Javier Camara, the actor. Apart from this, we have or online streaming, we'll have the general producer, Dago Garcia. There they are, the actor Juan Pablo Urrego and the actress Patricia Tamayo. How beautiful you look. Oh, I'm going to get very emotional. Uh, can you hear me, Dago, David, Patricia? Yes, perfect. I want to thank especially for you to be here with us because if I'm not mistaken, it's 4 a.m. in Colombia, is that correct? Yes, that's right. At this hour, normally Dago is awake and working. However, the bad face of Juan Pablo, we understand it because normally at this time he doesn't usually exist as a human being. Thank you very much for here from San Sebastian. Let's normally would follow, open the floor to the questions, raise your hands, and if anyone's following uh, this by streaming, you can ask questions via the internet. But to break the ice, I would like to ask a question myself, and that is, I've just finished seeing the film, I like this idea that instead of, of complaining about uh, darkness, you've got to light a candle. I think it's a universal concept. I like it. It could have been dealt with anywhere in the world, but I'm interested of, despite the fact it the film issue addresses universal issues, but specifically the Colombian context, and how was it, especially for Fernando, to combine both things, to go leave your country to tell a story which is quite specific, which takes place in Colombia, through these universal mechanisms that you address in the film. Well, the Colombian context, logically, historical, social, and political, is very important in the film, but it's seen through this bubble, shall we say, of this family, and this father, this son, this mother, the sisters. So... It's something that I've already done in other films. To tell, to tell a, uh, the story of a period of time or a context that in the forefront we've got the specific uh, story of a small group of people. And obviously, which everything that happens marks them and affects them. We had uh, the script as a guide which is unsurpassable and that's what I've guided and the adapted the adaptation of the book by David and I felt almost so at home in Colombia as if as if I was shooting a film here hi congratulations to both of you because I love the film my question is for both of you and Seeing through the figure of this fascinating man, Dr. Abad, he was a man who didn't postulate himself in an ideological framework, shall we say. He didn't define neither being on the right or the left wing. He, he didn't care much about dogmas, and he was more open to common sense. I'm not too sure whether you did this consciously or unconsciously, Fernando. It's a parallelism with the current situation we're living through, obviously, in Spain. And I would like to know your opinion about what I've just said. How do you see all of this? Thank you. I don't see any parallelisms or anything of the, of the sort, but this man, what he was above all, was a humanist, and he was a doctor, and his program was a program of public health. His program was try to improve the conditions, living conditions of people and especially 
people who need it to improve it, who are the most underprivileged classes and more humble classes. So any structure um, that allowed him to intervene in real life, uh, what moved him? He, that's what he wanted. But he wasn't moved by any ideology, but more by uh, the humanist side of things of uh, the existence of people's existence. But what we realize, and in a certain way the story shows us, um, and the film itself portrays this, is that any act that you do in one sense or another ends up having some sort of meaning and ends up being or has some significance and you end up being judged or attacked by you or loved or hated due to that act that you carry out. So therefore we never escape Perhaps this man, who was a man that at the beginning of the 1960s did the first massive polio vaccination campaigns, and what he wanted was for people to have access to vaccines, and that the communes had drinking water, and those towns that were farther away from the bigger cities at that period of time, there were big towns with, there were towns full of uh, diseases and there were and not very healthy living conditions. And he was a pioneer, not only in Medellin, but uh, throughout Latin America of this concept of public health. And he created that department at the University of Medellin. So this was his, what he dedicated his life to. And in that sense, I think there is something that you can link to today because this, that, his battle is quite current. Uh, that is a for all of those things quite curiously and at this ironically in this moment in time once the film is finished when the pandemic started I said we said gee there was a series of coincidences shall we say and quite curious a lot of curiosities uh, but he's a marvelous character Hector Abad Gomez his son wrote this book and he said, I thought it was going to be a minority book and it was a story that was not going to interest just a small group of people. And he wrote it above all thinking about his children who had never met their grandfather because his daughter was one year and his son had not been born yet. And writing that book, hopefully they were going to recognize who their grandfather was. And quite curiously, uh, half the world has recognized him because the, the book has been published in all different languages, in all different countries. And that sincerity and that love that you can breathe almost in the book has touched the hearts of the people who have read it, the, of us who have read it. Hi, good morning, and welcome to San Sebastian. An issue, uh, a question for the director, Fernando Treva. I think that Hitchcock said actor, that actors for them were like livestock. And I read uh, Sorogoyen yesterday, who manifested that actors are essential. From your seat as a director, how do you see this issue, whether you can confess this or tell us the truth about it? I adore actors. And I adore Hitchcock. I sometimes behave like I'm livestock. Very few times, but sometimes I do behave a bit like livestock. And Patricio and Juan Pablo, who laughed as well, we sometimes behave like livestock. But we're normally actors. For me, it's 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 great joy. In this case, I always I'd already worked with Javier, and I always enjoy having him with him, working or not working. But to be able to work with the act, Colombian actors with. For me, seeing Patricia Tamayo and Juan Pablo Urrego uh, fills me of joy, and me too. It makes me f very happy because I adore them, and it was a pleasure to work with them. They're, they're a marvelous representation of the cast of this film. And it's, it's not good for me to say so, but I shouldn't say this, but the quality of the actors in Colombia I thought was quite a luxury. It was astonishing. It was a luxury for me to work with them, and also for me. It's been, they gave me an enormous amount of help. I could even start to cry for many, many hours because the truth is, without that, 
unestimable health, free, generous, gratuitous, with those calls with Patricia. I was in Italy, she was in Colombia months beforehand, waiting and desiring it and to share a relationship together, friendship with Juan Pablo, with Laura, with so many brilliant people, and then a crew, which was brilliant as well, makes me think that that I've wasted not only myself, but many more people have wasted time for the big corporations to link between Latin America and Spain. We should have done this many years ago. There's, there's so an incredible and overwhelming talent in Latin America. Obviously, we know the Argentine, Mexican, and Brazilian talent, but I've worked in Peru. I've seen Colombia, Paraguay. There's such an astonishing, incredible talent. I said, how is it possible I speak the languages and I don't pay attention to them, that I do pay attention to other nationalities? So it, it's been an awakening for me, an incredible awakening. Their help has been over the top really and it's been a journey which has transformed me uh, as an actor and as a person i love them and i venerate them uh dago i saw less because he's the, he was a producer but the acting and emotional side of things i will always take it with me and it's each and see for each scene and frame you can see in the film this is a uh, this is a song for for to rejoice the film this book was celebrated by everyone I thought, how marvelous that we're, we're putting this on the screen. And in Colombia, I also feel very well. For example, one of the directors that I most admire of world cinema, Victor Gaviria, a couple of films like La Vendedora de Rosas or La Mujer del Animal, Victor came uh, to see us every day. And that was a, a gift for me to have him there during the shoot. I always say that Patricia, who you have here, if she is an American actress, she would have won a couple of Oscars already. And Gonzalo and Juan Pablo, who you have on the screen, would be the, he'd be in fashion as an actor in the world if he were American. They're Colombian, that's all good, but that doesn't make them less, that makes them more, because they do it because they love what they do. And, 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 and the truth is I've enjoyed very much working with them. And I love that. I felt very loved and very well protected, shall we say, in Colombia. Victor Gaviria's visits and Laura Mora, for example, I don't know whether you've seen her film. Matra Jesus, for example, Laura would come by the set. And you felt you fo as if you formed part we were of, we were all, we all formed part of the same thing. That. Renoir used to say that the world and borders, vertical borders have been made so that we don't see the real border, which is the horizontal ones which separate the different classes, social classes, the, the privileged, those that have got more are more well off. And he said that he had more to talk with a director, he was a French, more with a Hungarian film director than with a French chef because what linked them together connected them was their work and dedicating themselves to directing and that's a sort of family so therefore i felt that i was in that family in colombia i felt like a family of those of us who love cinema and who make films and the experience was quite enriching yesterday javier and i were on our own and no one was listening to us and we thought this has been a chapter an impressive and fundamental chapter in our life that we'll never forget it's not just another film no it isn't Okay, perhaps it would be good if Patricia and Juan Pablo said a few wo words from the screen and tell us what their experience was in the shooting the film with Fernando with Javier. Come on, Patricia, you first. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a, it's, I'm very excited to be here with you. It's a pity I couldn't be there, but it was marvelous. It was great. It was magical. There are projects in which there's an energy and harmony and a harmony and love that fills everything. Everything doesn't happen always, but when it's it's quite obvious, it doesn't happen always. And these are one of the this is one of the projects that has a lot to do with the book because all of us, we Colombians, undoubtedly Javier and Fernando, but here in Colombia, it's the book for everyone that everyone's read. It's almost an icon. 
the book and and obviously we were shooting uh, we saw the script and we saw this marvel and to talk about our country in a different way but in a beautiful way but also a harsh way a, a, because we must say it is also quite harsh to have Fernando, who I'd never met a director, who, who created a climate of harmony and calm and peacefulness in the on set. We all uh, shot the film with very, with very relaxed and almost, it was a really delightful for me. And also like working with Javier. We had scenes which were really powerful and others which were more relaxed, but we were always fully connected within and outside the, when we shot uh, the film and when we were outside off camera, that is to say, because, because our, uh, Javier has, is a very generous actor and I must say it, he's an enormously g generous actor and obviously I must say it was an honor to be with with these great people who have done such beautiful th things like Javier as an actor, Fernando as a director, and now I'm working with them. I thought it was, it was, it was a dream, but it was a dream that was my life at that time. And as Fernando has said, has definitely marked the rest of my days. It, it, was, it was just a, a real delight. How beautiful. Juan Pablo, where are you? Juan Pablo, there you are. The good-looking Colombian. I think uh, I don't have enough words. I think I will come short. I agree with everything you've said. For me, it was a real gift in life to be able to portray a character and tell the story of this book, which is so beautiful, and to be able to give, put in my little grain of sand so that the world can get to know and uh, who uh, Hector Abar Gomez was, as Patricia said, it was a privilege to talk, to work with Fernando and Javier. It was a dream come true, and the generosity of Fernando and the generosity of Javier was something which was quite particular, and it's a, something that has marked our lives as well, the production. This is something very difficult that it's difficult for this to happen again. And I want to thank you very much for having participated in this story, having worked with you. And, and, and I, I don't have enough words to explain it because I'm very moved to be here and excited and very, it's very emotional. And it was a privilege to be with all of you, with the Colombian production, with the Colombian actors, with the crew, um, and this is something which which was near perfection. I'm going to be eternally grateful. And plus, and this production is absolutely, completely, 100% Colombian. So the invited guests were we. And when they talk about generosity, you can imagine when one feels alone in a country which is not your country, and with that enorm how enormous this character is, with an accent which isn't my accent, and a life which is not my life, and to try to recover in two or three or four months, preparing for it, all the history of Colombia, which is f drained into that page by page of the book, the generous, uh, how generous people have been. And uh, Patricia helped me much m um, before I arrived. Juan Pablo helped me since the, from the time I got there. And there was... There was an enormous amount of generosity to enjoy, obviously, Fernando, but I said they opened up and they embraced me in a way I was almost always in tears, and I had to contain those tears because there was a lot of emotion in this story. We knew the, what the ending was, and we knew that many families in that country have undergone and suffered this, and the increase of violence in Colombia is cruel. The pandemic is being very tough for them. And this film not only tells the story of the past, but it's, all, it's more present than ever. And that help, the truth be said, without them, they know it. They know it. Without them, it was impossible for me to be able to portray this uh, role or character. So therefore, I owe an enormous, 
I'm not going to give them part of my salary. We told, we already talked about this, but but when they come to Spain, I'll I'll introduce them to a casting director or whatever. That let's not go over the top. They can stay in a hotel as well. I have not enough room for them to stay in my house. Not enough room for all of them. Hi, I love you. Another question. Hi, good morning, Fernando. I would like to ask you about the of leaving the hands of the screenplay in the hands of Dev, David Treba. Can you explain what this process was like? Well, it's quite curious. But when I was offered the film, it's quite curious because in, in film you're always being offered books that normally don't interest you to make a series or to make a film. And then all of a sudden they offer you a book which not only ha you've read and you've uh, cried and had a book that has moved you, but you have given everyone, you've given it as a gift to everyone surrounding you. I bought the book so many times and surprisingly I was offered it and I, d I thought I couldn't make a, a film about that book because of all types of reasons, you can imagine. And that was my first response. I said, well, listen, I thank you very much. I feel very uh, happy that you've given this and it makes me feel that's a lot of praise, but I don't think we can make a film. That was my first reaction. So therefore... I finished, well, they insisted, and this is something that I thank them very much. I said, wouldn't you read it again to see if you can find an angle from a filmmaking standpoint? And I read it again, and when I finished reading it for the second time again, I said, well, I, you can't make a film of this book, but, well, well perhaps if we focus upon the childhood and then the adult side and the film was focused upon two different moments in his life. Uh, perhaps that would be a possibility. It's not easy. It's complex and very complicated. So therefore, so the poison got into my blood, so to speak. And my first thing I did was to write the script with Hector. And I said, Hector, let's do the... And Hector said, listen, Fernando, I've got to tell you a couple of things. One is, I know nothing about film. I don't know what a script is. I've never written a script. And secondly, I took 20 years to write this book, to be able to sit down and write this book. 20 years had gone by since my father had died. And I wrote it, I wrote it crying from the first to the last page. It was opening up an injury, opening and that the drawer of pain, and suffering and for him it wasn't the case of of a, an author says i wrote a novel how beautiful it was and they buy it for a film no it has not the buy the rights for a film that has nothing to do with that it was something that was horrible I, he couldn't open this injury again by right he couldn't write the script so we discarded the possibility of hector i said i decided i was going to write the script and i as i was in the halfway through a script of my next film animations, my second animation film, film with Mariscal, in the middle of this, I said to the producers and to Hector, look, give me a couple of months, no more, so that I can finish the script that I'm writing now. And so and they were in a hurry to make the project because the project could enter into this year and so on and so forth. And they said, don't you have anyone you can trust who could start to write the script? And I, I said, are you, that, are you in such a hurry? And I'm finishing off this script. It's only going to be a couple of months. I said, yeah, we would like to, to do it quickly. Yes, I've got a person who I trust. But the problem is he's busier than I am. He's the busiest person that I know. He writes novels. He, he makes films. He writes articles in newspapers. I threw in the towel of working with him in, our, in my films because... I said, well, I called David and I told him and he had just finished finishing a novel, finished a film, but he's a moment he says, if it's right away, I can do it. And he liked the book. He says, if it's right away, in three months' time, I'll probably get involved in, I'll be involved in something else. 
but the no he liked the novel very much. I said, no, no, it's got to be right, so right now that they can't even wait for two months for me. And that's how he started to write it. And it was very good luck that David started to write the script. I told him the things that I'd thought about, how we could do it, and he got into it, and the guy and the, and the script made Hector very happy and Gonzalo and Dago as well. I think Dago should say something now, I think. Hi. Hi, Dago. Well, I think this film was waiting. For all of us, it was a, an appointment that we had, a date we had, and we didn't know. We knew, before knowing us, meeting personally, we all knew our work. The book, as Fernando said, was very close to him. And Gonzalo Cordova, the president of Caracol Televisión, who is the other co-producer of the film, also loved the book. But with Gonzalo, we shared the our taste for Fernando's work. We knew his films. I not only know his friction films, but I also liked his Calle 54, which at a certain moment in Colombia in the 80s and 90s became an icon in the circle of the people that like this type of music as well. And we shared our, our taste for bo his books on music and his dictionary for cine of cinema. And then we know that Fernando and Hector, we all knew the book, got together and they started to talk about the book. And then the Hector got together with Gonzalo and Fernando and to talk about the book, and it's as if we knew who we were. We'd already met. It's, it's a, it was a, it was like it was as if it were a date that we'd been we were, we'd been waiting to be able to, to 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 meet together at that date. So therefore, when uh, as David when he proposed David as a, a screenplay writer, for example, along with Gonzalo, we had talked. We enjoyed seeing his film Vivir es fácil con los ojos cerrados, Life is easy with your eyes closed, and how we enjoyed Javier's performance. Everything was ready, so to speak. Those things, it's fate that we should get together, which was making the film. And everything happened very organically. I remember that the first time that we started to to talk about how how the film was, Hector Abad, the author of the book, we said, well, who do you think who should be the the main character, your father? And he said, as if it were something, it was utopian. He said, there's an actor who I love very much and who reminds me of my father very much, which is Javier Camara. And and he, 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 he talked to David that hopefully David and Javier, he asked David that whether Javier had time. There's a lot of magic around the film because we got together the ones, the people that we had to get together and at the, the time, at the moment that we had to get together. So therefore, I think this film is like fulfilling a date that existed in the past and it had to happen and that's the result of which we all feel very, very proud. How beautiful. How beautiful, Dago. Hi, my question is for Dago. You'd, uh, Patricia had uh, mentioned this a bit. The book is also quite harsh and quite hard-hitting because there's a, there's a murder of a defender of human rights in the 1980s in Colombia, and there's a strong link to the current reality in Colombia, a lot of leaders in other circumstances, dark forces are following, continue to kill them. And, and in the film, it's as if these violent actors were abstract. Nobody knows where they come from. They talk about lists of dark forces and, um, or death lists of dark forces. There's a, Dago, what was the issue of the questions that still emerge after seeing this film and for Javier what's the challenge of portraying a character who is so kind because do you all of a sudden you need to uh, add any nuance or how is the kindness of Dr. Abad Gomez well I think that the book and the film have the great virtue 
that they they approach our problem and our problems and our violence from a perspective which is much more humane more almost as if it were a day to day because if you look at the book and you look at the the film and the book it's a story about the family it's about about family relations that's what it deals with and this means that the approach approaching the issue is an approach which is much more poetic and in fact it makes it much more intense and much more re revealing one could run the or fall into the temptation of making a film which is political deliberately political or obviously or political but do it taking that approach in the film combining that structure with the structure of the full the the book and the perspective that david and fernando took on our reality makes the film be much more revealing because it's it's showing how in Com colombia violence has touched us all colombia it's not only it's being it's affecting in the conflict areas or it can only be seen in the political estimates all of those actors involved stakeholders involved in violence it's touched all of us to a certain way and i think that's the great vir virtue of the film that it manages to indicate and s to signify what this issue is and almost on a day to day and it, it reminds us all again that we can't get used to this this way of thinking and this way of of confronting a life so i think the film uh, that's why it's very important and it's going to be very important for all our country we've got signs that at an international level the film is going to work very well which is ha what's happening in San sebastian is quite symptomatic but i think that when we colombians can see the film it's going to touch some fibers that in the best of the cases is going to generate a reflection that I hope can bring about a solution to the situation that we've undergone and suffered for so many years. As regards to kindness, of the kindness of the character, Hector Abad Gómez is a person who's polyhedric, shall we say. There are, there are a lot of layers to him. I had so many, I talked so much with his granddaughter, Daniela, and with a son, who Daniela, who forms part of the film, she's a, she's got she's made several she's well reputed and about her two grandparents uh, she's made several uh, documentaries and she's well known daniela when i discovered the character because the only revelation i had was the book but as fernando or my colleagues in colombia sent me more information about his radio programs about the recordings that he made with his children throughout his entire life or those letters to each and every one of his, his son and daughters teaching them being a teacher but loving and being absolutely paternal and so close i was being i felt slowly but surely the character overwhelmed me and when i saw that the character as the americans say uh, he was bigger than life he's a character that was you couldn't even address or approach when i saw that there was a some painting in the faculty of of uh, medicine with his face for example painted i thought it was one of the decoration one of the decorations for the film no that's the way it is it's a marvelous graffiti of him on a wall when people saw me dressed as the doctor and they they would embrace me out in the street and it was overwhelming for me and i tried to create a man a good man but a man of a family a father with a family i was a father at that time as well so it was inevitable to love those children with all the energy I could offer them. It is true that I tried to base myself upon his kindness and his love and the love that he gave to everyone and how he took care of everyone. We saw student doctors who had studied with him, we met. And then you also saw how there were looks of hate as well. And even in the street when you were shooting the film, you noticed 
that society which is constantly, and I noticed it a lot because I was like a big dish antenna. I was open to any accent, to any small little gesture, any little detail, anything that Patricia said, be careful with that S. It, it's, it, that's, you said an S which was too Spanish, and all the time I was, and I noticed that quite a lot. I noticed that it was a character who was very alive, and not only with us, but also out in the street. So therefore I tried to, to impregnate my persona, and I swear that there were days that I called him because there were scenes I called on him because there were scenes that were very complicated. I said, Hector, come here, come here. How do I do this? How do I port portray this? I can't do this on my own. And there it is, what you see on the screen. So please, somebody talk. Hi. A question for Javier. You mentioned it a little bit, but a bit more about the work to change the accent. Well, that's much more difficult than Narcos. I said I did Narcos, I know the Colombian accent. No, not at all. No. I was, it was a good character that I was portraying in that film. I'd done a series of villains and I didn't want to have left that country without only doing villains. And they also, from, from a not Colombian perspective, the accent was a, a difficult journey, but I had a lot of help. If all of a sudden I gave you an accent, Patricia and Juan Pablo said, no, how horrible, gee, he's, he's lost his accent completely. Because it is true that he started, I more an accent from um, Medellin with those pronunciations of the L, which are so beautiful and those S's well pronounced, but the doctor, at all, didn't have that accent at all. The doctor was a man who was a university professor who had traveled a lot. He had modulated and he had another accent which was much more for his teaching, his radio programs. He had a certain prose with a certain pronunciation. So therefore, his accent was much more European than the accent, the Paisa accent from Medellin. So I started to prepare that, but when I started to receive the videos and the and Fernando's recordings, I said, no, 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 he doesn't talk like that at all. And therefore, when I get there, I said, I'll, I'll have all of that information. But I got there with not too much time preparing, but it was the help of everyone was constant. What was, what was impossible to improvise because the, the richness of our common language makes Colombian be much more complicated than English. The expressions, que hubo mi hijo, for example, I, can I use the two expressions together? No, you can't do those two expressions together. We would never do that. Things that you don't understand, it's impossible for you to understand. So obviously any improvisation. I went to Patricia with Pablo and Daniel. I said, can we say this? But can, can't Medellin, that G, that double L, how do you pronounce it? And before any scene, we repeated this. And so I had a group of people surrounding me. No, 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 no. Be careful here with that S or with that letter or whatever. So I had a lot of help with the accent. So therefore... Um, you've liked, they liked it, and the most important thing, the most important thing of all is that the family is happy. They say, whatever you say, which is important under Lee, and what the critics say, and the audience says, we saw the audience and they were applauding us um, very affectionately, and with tears in there, I said, how beautiful that this happens to people. Juan Pablo and Patricia, the audience would come out, and people were applauding, and they were applauding us when we walked out, and they were had tears in the eyes, and there was beautiful Dago. And this is a, a beautiful prize, but the prize is to, that Fernando and Cristina presented the film in Medellin to the family. And they flew in so many memories and so beautiful days of conversations. Fernando could say this, that for me, I said, that's it. I can breathe. I said, the families liked it. If they like it, I've done, I've done, my, I've done, a, I've done my job. And now I hope the film, you enjoy the film and you love it. The work has been pleasurable, has been a pleasure. It's not been tough at all. There were days that were very complicated in the shoot, but it was a genuine pleasure. And then all of that weight on my sho the shoulders of this character, because the novel is all about him. When you discover more about him, him, the university, his political side, the, fa the, the family, the World Health Organization, a very important, a doctor uh, said so many things that are so current that is happening nowadays, for example, washing our hands in that scene with their son now has, has gone viral almost. 
So no, no, you have to wash your hands and and co correctly. What's the song that you know? Well, sing that song while you wash the hands because germs and virus. And so when we saw that scene, I said, my God. I didn't pay attention to it sufficiently because this man was so current. He's so nowadays uh, to g do put my soul like my colleagues did uh, to each character. I could talk hours and hours about this film. Specifically, Juan Pablo and Patricia were like your coaches, one on one side and one on the other. Javier would look at them and always ask them questions. Very pleasant. They never came before. I said, what do I, what do I, no, no, there's a little S that you say there. Well, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, how do I pronounce it? They're very, very well-mannered. I told them, I said, if you don't tell me everything, I'll kill you. Tell me absolutely all the how badly I do, I'm doing things with the accent, how I pronounce you, how do you pronounce with this beautiful music you have when you speak? It's almost like a melody. So, remember, Patri, you helped me very much, my love. Yes, that's right. I think we all helped each other very much amongst us all. How beautiful. Well, Javier was saying that he could spend hours talking about the film. We could listen to him for hours and hours on end, but unfortunately, we have to leave it here because... We need the room. Uh, sorry for all of you that had a lot of questions. I know there were several of you. And a big round of applause for the five people that were here at the press conference. Thank you. See you soon, my friends. See you soon. See you. Get some rest.